Well, hey guys, hi, Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode of What's the Right Shot? And uh, Chris Morgan, my partner with The Serve, and uh, Paul Wolf with The Very Tough Return. His partner is Len Wofford. And, you know, Chris is just obviously trying to do anything he can to try to get the ball back in play. And, and I think he, you know, what I suppose I could have gone back and asked you, well, you know, what do you think is the right shot for Chris to play here? And number one, it's, all right, got to get the back and I got to get back and play, right? Could he lob, right? Could he lob up the line? Probably not. I mean, Lenny's kind of on his, on his service line there. And so he's trying to, trying to get across court. So what's the message today? The message today is this. Um, Yours truly kind of, it's me against them for a second, right? Because Chris is obviously out of the court. And so we talk a lot about anticipation as if there's a hard and fast formula for knowing what your opponent's about to do. And you cannot tell me what shot Paul is about to play here. You can't tell me if he's going to play it back to Chris, if he's going to go here in the middle, if he's going to go down at my feet, if he's going to go back back behind me in the alley, or if he's going to just kind of push a little lob over here. There's no way to have a formula that actually guarantees that you know that you can anticipate what shot he's about to play. The best that we can do in these situations is just guess. Is just go, okay, well, the guess is, well, if I was Paul, then I would do this. And that sometimes can get you in trouble because you can guess yourself into thinking a shot's going to go somewhere based on what you might do. And the next thing you know is that player over there has no, no intention, has no sense that that would be his shot. So sometimes that can get you in trouble. Um, sometimes you can guess, well, okay, this is what Paul typically does. But this is an unusual situation, right? We just don't get ourselves in this, in, in this, in this situation too often. So for me, it's just a guess. And, and, and my thought here is that, is that Paul is going to play it right here. Right, and I've I've already started to move over there, just kind of guessing. And look, I mean, if I've moved too early and he starts to see me move, okay, then he's going to go by. He's going to go back behind me. But the ball's up high. I'm not sure. You know, out of, out of his peripheral, can he actually see me move? I don't know. But I'm guessing. I'm just simply thinking this is where he might go. And I actually slightly overrun this thing, right, and have kind of an awkward volley. And really, my only play is with kind of being cramped on this, is just to play it back here and try to get it down and just kind of hope for the best. And you know what? It works out. It works out. So, uh, I just think there's this big thing about anticipation that, you know, everyone's trying to say, well, here's the formula. In, in some situations, there's no formula. Sometimes what you can do in anticipation is you can actually, you can kind of eliminate potential shots, right? I mean, you could say, as your opponent lines up to play a shot, well, there's only really two things that they can do. And in this case, I just kind of feel like Paul's got, he's got a few more than just two choices. And so for me, it's not elimination. At this point, it's just a guess. And it's not a best guess. It's just a guess. And you know what? I would say some of the time it works out and some of the time it doesn't. And even if you guess correctly, sometimes like this, you might overrun it a hair. And here it is in tight on you and uh, you get fortunate. So let's not put too much into thinking that, hey, man, what's the formula for this particular situation? There is none. <laughs> there is none. Guys, i uh, love to hear from you down below. Um, uh, comments, questions, remarks, whatever, in the comments area. Or you can shoot me an email, brennettwebtennis.com, if you want to keep it private. I'm going to play this point in real time for you. Then I'll do a slow-mo version. 
And, uh, and then at the end of this uh, video, um, I've got some examples of a backhand slice drive. If yours is right now not behaving the way you want it to, maybe your backhand slice is just floating or sitting or whatever, and you want to learn how to get a little giddy up on it and still be accurate and consistent, I just might have something for you. So be sure to watch the to, to the end of this video and then down below in the description area, there's a link that will take you to an information page uh, so you can get more details on what I've got for you to help you with your underspin slice drive back in. Guys, that's it for me today. Time for all of us. Got to get out there. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, We'll see you again next time. Hey, it is Brent back here with you. Really hope you enjoyed this episode of What's the Right Shot. And yeah, if you're still trying to figure out your one-handed backhand slice, your underspin drive, right, where it's not floating and sitting up for your opponent, then what I've got for you is, of course, I want you to check out uh, below. There is a link down below in the description area that um, will take you to an information page because there's really three habits that we've got to have on this backhand slice uh, especially for something like this where we just saw it where you're taken out wide and maybe you want to play a little dropper off of it. Here are a couple of points uh, from a match I played uh, a while ago. And look, if you think you always have to top spin a backhand passing shot, you don't. And here are a couple examples of how you can actually play a really controlled slice underneath your opponent and, uh, and, and be good. So look, if you want some help with the slice backhand down below, there's a link, click it, and it'll take you to an information page and you get a lot more details on what's in the course. And there are several bonus courses in, uh, in the package as well. Any questions, brent at webtennis.com.